definitely one amazing one. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better to myself. Such a hit, such it a classic. It is basically a marriage of veterans in the music industry. Of course, Sounds Altern leading the pack. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you so much for me. being here. Well, 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 you and all of the matching you. today. Browns I know, on right? I think I missed the memo. I got the memo. Uh, <laughs> so I guess you're matching with the couch, Yeah, right? the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Both couches. You know? Good to have you. Thank you very much Thank for Thank you so much us. for having me. You so know. How long did it take you to do that song? You, you decided to bring a lot of veterans <laughs> in the music industry. You know, and why did you decide to do that? This. I'm going to shock you with the answer. It took me nothing less than one week <laughs> to get that song together. You know, I, I actually organized something like a competition for producers online to, you know, throw me a beat that they feel, they feel I'll be able to jump on. And some guy stands still, setting this beat. And every time I picked uh, the pen up to write something, I felt like I was cheating on a jiggle, you know? <laughs> Was, that vibe was there, the old Konto Jalala vibe. When I kept writing, I said, no, I can't do this alone. Let me get all these guys on there. And then, you know, they were just a phone call away from, I have all their numbers, you know. So I said, okay, let me, let me see if they, they be up for this, you know. And definitely they obliged me. And I said, okay, we got to shoot this video. So the video, like, turned from a song to a project. You know, it was more of a project. I just wanted people to know what they're missing. Because Nigerians, sometimes, they don't know what we're missing, you know. So I served them a little bit. Yeah. That's really good, though. And, of course, you yourself as an icon is someone that Olive and I have been looking forward to speaking to. And Olive and I were like, hmm, what can we really actually tap in on? And we decided that it's time for us to speak to you about pressure. There is so much pressure in the industry, and you would know it better than anyone. And we want to get the ins and outs with you on a lot of different things around that same factor. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. I was born ready. <laughs> All right. I think we should start off first from pressure with regards to our looks. Now, a while ago, mm -hmm. some people had attacked you on social media for having repeated a jacket, and you gave them a very fantastic reply with mm -hmm. regards to this. What would you say, because there are many young people who want to make it into the entertainment industry, but there's a concept of fake it until you make it, package mm -hmm. yourself to look like it. Mm -hmm. How do you handle, or how would you advise someone who is seeking to enter into the entertainment industry to handle that pressure to look a certain way? Well, first and foremost, you should understand that all this is just a facade. You know, sometimes people get too caught up in the old hype and then forget that they are human beings. You know, you have to understand and keep yourself grounded by people you keep um, yourself surrounded by. You make sure there are no yes men or people that are just so plastic around you. Make sure you have people, your day ones, you know, your family, people that see beyond that star, you know, be, see beyond the spotlight and they can tell you the truth and keep you grounded, just, you know, like, some people, when they move out of where they, where they, you know, their comfort zone, or not, not comfort zone, when they move out of places that, you know, make them thick, thick, you know, sometimes they lose it. And what I've been able to do in my own career is, I know, I understand how the wave is, you know, so you don't succumb to the wave. The wave might be a trend, and if you succumb to the trend, you'll go with it. So you make yourself as accessible as possible and also as believable as possible and as organic as possible. So your growth would speak your story, not any other thing that's happening. Because people would try to pressure you to go along with what is obtainable now, but they really want to know your real story. So it's like what they want and what they need. They need to know your real story. And that is what is going to keep you relevant for a while and going to keep you in the news for positive things or for, for real things. You don't have to pressurize yourself to, you know, to do what the next one just did, you know, to outdo it or whatever. So sometimes it's just about the story. Can you tell the story? You know, for instance, um, everybody has a story, and that's what makes us unique. You know, so uh, the certain guy, a friend of mine, back in the days when we were just hustling and getting a buy, he, he, I got a um, 309. Pojo 309. I don't think they make any of those anymore. <laughs> I was blasting a factory reject. So I bought it in. I felt like, oh, this is my first car, so let me let me keep it real. You know, so my guy was like, oh no, no, no. Man, we got to keep it like, you know, how they expect us to be. And then he got a, a Benz. And then I was telling him the story back then, which of course, years later he came to tell me, wow, this guy, your wisdom when you you know, the wisdom you spoke back then is now, you know, trans, you know, transpiring now, everything. So I said, okay, this was, what, this was what I told him. I said, 
you have to tell a story with your growth and it has to be believable you know subconsciously you are you are telling a story to people and you are instilling belief in whatever you do so for instance i go from and people like success stories but you don't have to overdo it the success story you are telling is a success, your success story i buy a small car now i get more money i buy a better one i get more money i buy a better one people see that growth and they believe that they're not wasting their attention on you so they keep going with you the moment you drop you'll be like oh this guy don't fall off or whatever so at that moment in time, you're trying to carry them along. Even if it's 309, hey, some people are like, okay, finally you got a car. You know? And then when you step up, they'll be like, oh, better, better, better. Then you keep going. But if you want to jump to a navigator, back then, no. I think it's a very, very valid um, illustration you gave. Because mm -hmm. what we find now is that we find people who are packaging it and passing across a, a wrong narrative to the younger generation, making Trust them me. feel like, you know, once you get in, everything happens quick, 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 you blow. No, it's not, it happens for some, but it yeah, doesn't yeah, always no, happen. No, no, it does. It, no, no, you're so right. You're spot on. I'm just saying that leave what you, what you are trying to portray to people. I'm saying your story. Are you telling it the right way? And yeah. if you think you're even trying to um, nip talk it and whatever, wait it, you're still doing yourself bad. Because at the end of the day, you know, the story is what will keep you going. And if you tell a wrong story or you take, tell a rush, rush story, you buy the navigator now, tomorrow now, it's like Uber, then they see you. Mm -hmm. People, you're telling a story of failure. You can only ever be yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, let's also speak about work pressure and the pressure of trying to find the right balance. We also mm -hmm. know that when you're in the industry, you have the pressure of knowing that you have to put in all the work, you have to be determined and dedicated, but at the same time, you have to keep your life at bay. You have to have a life outside of work, and so much pressure comes trying to find that intersection. How did you ever cope with that, and how do you still cope with that? You just have to, you have to really stay grounded and humble, you know, I missed everything, you know, there's this artificial humidity and there's the real one that comes from deep down inside. And that alone can keep you confident of yourself, regardless of spotlight or not, or, or look warm or hot, or I got a hot single out there or not. You know what you're made of, and that's all that you need to keep you going. Because um, a lot of people fall off um, to pressure when they say, oh, I just need it right now. You go do that, do that like that. And then you lose all your following of that time that were just waiting for you to do something, you know, they would love. And then you just jump on the next bandwagon and then they'll be like, oh, later. So I know. You know, and then that's, that's really what happens. That's how people lose a lot of fans. And, you know, for me, I just talk to young guys. I tell them, look, what's your core value? What, what's, what really makes you tick? Do not worry about, like I was studying a certain guy. In your premises yesterday, I found out, you know, at this time, not too many people play with live band and all that. But this guy is really a, you know, Afro hip hop type of person. But I found him playing with a lovely band and it was really entertaining. So I told him, I've not seen you do, do that in recent times because you got a, a real fame. I said, you better continue that stuff because that is what, what will, you know, give you that longevity and everything. So that's, that's the kind of thing you should do. Don't fall to the pressure of, oh, I don't enter small now, so you keep yourself going because that's what really will stand you out. You know, you need to find your, you know, your niche and find that that place you can start using the gimmick to catch people. That, okay, this is really what this guy is made up of. Yeah. This is what this guy is. Don't worry. You might not, you know, you might be walking against the tides, but you are going. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very in agreement with all that you said, but let's not deny the fact that. At some point, I feel that, okay, M.I., for example, recently in his latest album in mm. Young Denzel, one of the songs he said, rappers are now singing just to get popular. And we find that lots of people in the entertainment industry, singers and rappers, are starting to be bent by what the society is expecting of them. Have you at any point faced the pressure to change your sound or the style of your music because of what was trending or what was in vogue? And how were you able to handle it? Well, this is what, it's not pressure, it's just um, being realistic and also wanting to be part of, you know, what is, or wanting to be part of the playlist. Now, you have to be very smart when you, when this kind of thing gets thrown at you. For me, at some point, you know, I come from like old school, you know, old school, but you know, like I've been doing this for 18 years professionally. So when the sound changes, what I do is, I go for a new producer, 
I make sure, because my music mostly has reality content, and I'm trying to talk about one thing or the other, an, an issue or something, you know, I'm just trying to get a topic to my music or a title that, that would have a meaning eventually. So um, the first time I had that um, kind of challenge was when I wanted to release um, Bushmeat, and I released a song called Bushmeat with Two Face and everything. The song was only like, so a lot of guys were like, they can't play the songs in the in the clubs, and um, an upcoming DJ back then, DJ Spino, <laughs> big star now, he just came to meet me. He was in school. He was like, oh, he loves that song so much, and he would love to have a club version. I was like, why not? Let's do it, you know, because I was open to whatever at that point in time, because that song was already getting big, but not in the clubs, and so we made a remix to it. And that was how it flew everywhere, you know. So for me, I'd um, I'd always go with with what is what it's uh, the sound is like right now. But I will not water down my lyrics or water down my core value that people really love. So I'd find the fifty-fifty balance for everything. So you don't water down just because you want to, you know, because of pressure. You just have to find a smart way of getting. Part of the, to be part of that and stop being like a dinosaur. You just have mm. to move with time as well. Not just because you say you want to, then you start playing old sound for people that, you know, and then the playlist is on 110 BPM and you're still 80, you know. So you have to be part of it, but at the same time with your. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, often what comes with that when you make that decision and you're like, you know what, I'm not going to water down my content, is you find yourself in a situation where you have to just persevere and you have to try so hard to stay in your lane and do what you know how to do, right? But what we find, what we find that comes with that is that we find that a lot of mental health issues often stem from that level of pressure at the same time. Let's speak about mental health for a second. I read a report today that stated that two in five Nigerians today are living with chronic depression. And we do know that depression is not something that is alien to the entertainment industry. Have you had any experiences in terms of poor mental health? And if so, how have you handled it? Mm, you know, for me, I don't think I ever, you know, thought of the, my situation. My situation is, um, is one in a million. Because when I, when I look around me, I don't see the guys, and I don't see everybody we started with. I see young guys, like I just said, you know, a young guy back then, and I just feel blessed that I'm still around and people mm -hmm. still love me. I still, I still still have millions of followers on social media. People are yearning to hear the next thing from me. So the way you, you have to be a bit more spiritually balanced yeah. to understand the concept of life and what your what your purpose is you know it's a bit bigger than pressure you understand i've been able to over time and back in the days find a smiley space in everything to know that if anybody's coming at me they are insecure because i know i'm very very good you know not to brag I but I keep and that you've part your bragging in, rights. I, no 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 i keep that part inside i don't say that i'm just saying that's what i tell myself and so any time at all I find myself being confronted or people throwing jabs, I just laugh about it. Like, if you, if you are throwing jabs at me and the best artist that you guys consider as the best is give me thumbs up and doffing his hat for me, then I'm good. So for me, I'm always in a safe place. And you know, spiritually, I just... I don't think I deserve all this anyway. So if any any spot I find myself, I just... You're very grateful to him. Yeah, I'm always very grateful. Like, I always find something to be grateful about. And at this point in time, I have so many things to be grateful about. I've been doing this forever, you know. I think this um, is something we actually have to pick away from. I'm so glad you've never had to deal with any mental health issue. And hopefully for the rest of your life, you'd never have to deal amen, with Amen, amen. Yeah, but always finding the happy story, always finding something yeah, to be grateful and, don't, and don't to be put, thankful put, for. When you put, put too much pressure on yourself, you know, it kind of like, it's in, it's in, it's in gradually, and then you get to that dark hole where you won't be able to speak with, speak it to any, anybody else. So Is this why you look young? 
Uh, That's yeah, why you've I cast was, your, lo your young looks to, all through I'm, your I'm career. I'm the kind of person, I love making people laugh. I love laughing. Yeah. I love watching comedy. I don't do, I don't, you know, I avoid a lot of dark things that would over, a dark cloud over my head. I don't need. So positive energy keeps you looking younger. Amen. That, Take if that that's, advice. Yeah, I don't Take know. That. I don't know what keeps me young. I don't know. No, I was you are actually you. Keep, you're actually looking younger because I, I was very young when I was listening to your music. Trust me. You don't and want to since I was young, and now I am younger. <laughs> You've never gotten older than this. You've always looked the that same is way. Good, you know that's me. a fantastic thing. And you've earned your bragging right. You've done so well in the industry. And you have a concert coming up shortly. So tell us about it. Oh, yeah. That is a very interesting part of, you know, my smiley space. <laughs> <laughs> like, I look back and I, I just, I'm always so happy that I strike a lot of stuff. I mean, I've struck a lot of stuff off my bucket list. Like, when I was growing up, I was playing basketball. And I was playing basketball competitively. I wanted to be well, I'll probably make it to the NBA someday and all that. So this is how I this is how I do what I do. When I lost both parents, I was like, oh damn, I was just about making I was just making it and I was like, oh, damn, how do I do this? So that part of me, you know, I know if if I wasn't careful I would have fallen into depression or something at that point in time. You know. But what did I do? I picked myself up. And I said, okay, fine. If I can't do much for my parents anymore, did my two younger ones, they're still going through school. That's what my parents are supposed to do. So now I'm filling in their shoes with my other brothers and sisters, and I'm going to make sure that these people, you know, don't miss my parents. And you know, that's now I found this uh, one happy space or one fulfill, fulfilling um, energy there. So I just go with that. That's how you need to go with the next thing. So 18 years down the line. I'm very grateful to God, you know, keeping me young, keeping me energetic. Basketball, I don't play professionally, but now I'm part of a big basketball um, competition. Congratulations. You know, uh, I've, I've been a co-owner of a basketball team. You know, the NBA, I've been one goose, and they invite me for every other occasion that concerns basketball in Africa. So definitely... That you pass, you know, that pass that's another started. happy space. Oh, big time happy <laughs> space, you know. I just got off the basketball court coming here, so I love basketball. People know that already. So, And I got, you know, a call up from the Olympic Committee because of what I do with basketball. So big shout out to everybody that's been part of that process. And then the, my music. My music and the movies. I used to write scripts way back, you know. And then movie, we made our movie, Head Gone, sold out, still on Netflix, doing very well. Now is the mu my music part. And my music, now 18 years old, is finally legal. We are <laughs> celebrating it <laughs> in a big way. It's a musical. The musical stars nearly everybody in the industry. Biggest in the movie industry, biggest in the comedy industry, biggest in the music industry. So is it like a stage play? It's like a stage oh, play, but you know, my music is going to be the content and then there's a lot of stuff driving it. It's called The Jungle Story. It's happening 12th, 13th, 14th of October. Starring RMD, Alibaba, Okay Bakasi, Basket Mabofi, AY, um, Simi Falls, Tubaba, Dari Adalade, Joke J. Cobbs. You are all invited. Sorry, sir, you, you ignored us. I mean, you don't call our names. No, it's not like you do an audition that we didn't come for audition. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys. But I'm actually excited. Yeah. I'm excited because I know your music always tells a story. In fact, recently we were having a conversation and someone was saying your song about the Bushmeat catching the hunter mm. is actually a song that's very very relevant People at where we are me. in People our politics People always tag me right every now. day. I'm tired of the tagging. Exactly. Them. So it's, it's, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of political consciousness, a lot of oh awareness. Oh, my God. This is the jungle story. You know it's a jungle out there. So yes, it is. This story is about the jungle, and you have to find where you belong. So 12th, 13th, 14th. Of October, Terra Culture. Okay. It's going to be crazy. You guys don't want to miss No, I miss won't miss don't, it. Don't be told. Trust me. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It was me. an absolute Thank you pleasure. So much. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.